my brothers and sisters, the 34th number of Psalms is one of the powerful, inspirational Psalms. It is one of those Psalms that has been such a tremendous source of strength and encouragement to countless individuals over and across the years. The 34th number of Psalms is rich with expressions of praise. It is rich with expressions of thanksgiving. It is rich with expressions of faith. Oh, brothers and sisters, the 34th number of Psalms was in fact a psalm of David. It was one of those psalms that was penned or written, if you will, by David. Uh, this psalm was written by David when David was on the run when David was fleeing from the anger and the wrath of a jealous king by the name of Saul. David, my brothers and sisters, penned this psalm during a time in his life that was filled with danger, filled with much hardship and much distress. Yet, David says so many powerful things during the course of this psalm that has blessed me down through the years. Before we arrive at verse 8, David has already said so much to so many. In verse 1, David opens Psalms 34 with these powerful words. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Oh, brothers and sisters, even though David penned this psalm at a time when his own life was in mortal danger, David has still come to the conclusion that he will still bless the Lord. Even though things are far from being ideal, even though his circumstances are far from being pleasant, David has arrived at the conscious conclusion that he will still bless the Lord. And all brothers and sisters, David has concluded that the Lord's praise shall continually be in his mouth. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, David shows us that regardless to life's various circumstances, regardless to life's sometimes very difficult and harsh situations, we still ought to have a resolve to praise the Lord. Blessing the Lord at all times. Not just during the times that are good, but on those occasions when things are bad. Oh, brothers and sisters, David moves on to say, my soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. And David comes to verse 3, and he gives this invitation to all. It is a powerful invitation. David says by way of verse 3, Oh, magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. Can I get a witness? My brothers and sisters, David was well aware of the fact that we are capable of magnifying the Lord all by ourselves. 
Amen. Amen. But all brothers and sisters, David also realized that it's so much better when we can all come together on a spirit of one accord and magnify his name together. When we can come together with the spirit of one accord and exalt the name of our God together. Can I get a witness? All oh, brothers and sisters, David goes on and says in verse 4, I sought the Lord. And my seeking was not in vain. I sought the Lord. And David says, he heard me. And delivered me from all my fears. Even though David, my brothers and sisters, was one who was highly favored by God. David was not exempt from having some fear. There were some frightening episodes in David's life. There were some frightening experiences, some frightening situations in the life of David. But David says, when he sought the Lord, the Lord heard him and delivered him from all of his fears. Is there anybody here besides me who have lived long enough to know that there are some things in life that can make us fearful. There are some things in life that can bring upon us a spirit of fear. But David declares, not only did God hear him, but David declares God delivered him, not just from some, but from all of his fears. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, there have been occasions in my life when I have experienced him in a very personal way, speaking peace and calm to my soul, speaking to me and telling me, I know the situation looks bad, but don't forget who you have on your side. Don't lose sight of whose hand you're in. Don't lose sight of who you are. Don't lose sight of whose you are. Oh, brothers and sisters, David declares that the Lord delivered him from all of his fears. And there are so many things in life that can bring upon us a spirit of great fear. Sickness can bring on us a spirit of fear and cause us to find ourselves in the grips of fear because of a bad report that we've received from the doctors. Fear. Oh, brothers and sisters, sometimes the loss of our employment, the loss of a job can reduce us to a spirit of fear. Sometimes, my brothers and sisters, financial distress can cause us to fall into the grips of great fear. Isn't it so? Oh, brothers and sisters, but David declared, the Lord delivered him from each, from every one of his fears. And all brothers and sisters, David declares further that they looked unto him and were lightened and their faces were not ashamed. He goes on and says in verse 6, the poor man cried and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all of his troubles. Amen. It changed my entire perspective on troubles, regardless to what the nature of those troubles might be. Amen. 
Oh, brothers and sisters, it enables me to realize that I can face the troubles of my present. I can also face the troubles of my future. Confident. Oh, brothers and sisters, that the Lord will take care of me. Can I get a witness? That the Lord will deliver me from all of my troubles. Oh, brothers and sisters, it enables us to sleep better at night. When we know that we serve a God who can deliver us from any of life's troubles. Can I get a witness? But all brothers and sisters, David comes now to the seventh verse of Psalms 34. And he speaks powerfully and says, the angel of the Lord encampeth. Round about them that fear him and delivereth them. Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, I think every child of God ought to believe in the presence, ought to believe in the existence of angels. I believe in angels. And all, oh, brothers and sisters, the old warriors of my childhood used to sing a song all night and all day. His angels keep watching over me. Oh, brothers and sisters, on one occasion when preaching about the presence of angels, when preaching about the existence of angels, of angelic beings, I was called into question after the revival service by a young woman in Cincinnati, Ohio. And she said to me, how in the world can you believe in angels? I said, what do you mean? She said, how can you believe in angels when you can't see them? How can you believe in what you can't see? And I simply responded to her by saying, you believe in breath. And you can't see that. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, I know. God uses angels. To do his bidding. God also uses angels to watch over. His children. If Daniel were here, he'd tell you that God employs angels to do his bidding. For Daniel will tell you he got thrown into a lion's den. And all brothers and sisters, he stayed there in that den of lions all night. But early the next morning, the king came and shouted down into that den of lions. And scripture tells us that Daniel responded after having been in a den of lions all night. Daniel said to the king, your highness, I'm still here. I've been surrounded by lions, but I'm still here. I've been in a dangerous situation, but I'm still here, still alive because God dispatched his angel to lock the lion's mouths. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, there's so many times that God has used angels to care, to protect each of us. And all brothers and sisters, David declares, the angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear or reverence him and delivereth them. And then he comes to the verse wherein our text is based. When he comes to verse 8, he's built his case so strongly until he's now ready to say to all, Oh, taste 
and see that the Lord is good. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, it blessed me greatly. For I see three things in this powerful verse. Three things that the Holy Spirit urges me to make mention of. The first thing that I see, number one, is an urgent invitation to those who have not come to know the goodness of God. An urgent invitation to those who have not come to know the goodness of God. Isn't it unfortunate that in our day and time there are still people who have not come to know the goodness of God. Can I get a witness? Isn't it something that even in a day and time as advanced as this, there are still men and women, boys and girls, who are ignorant concerning the goodness of our God. Can I get a witness? Somebody knows what I'm talking about. David extends a powerful invitation. It is in fact what I call an urgent invitation. An urgent invitation to those who have not come to know the goodness of God. All oh, brothers and sisters, it's urgent. It's urgent that every man, every woman, every boy, every girl will come to know the goodness of the Almighty God. Can I get a witness? Oh, that's why I have devoted the larger portion of my life to spreading the good news, to sharing with others all over this nation and in other parts of the world about the good news and the goodness of our God. Can I get a witness? He's good. He's good. And all brothers and sisters, he abounds in goodness. Those who come into a relationship with him will experience firsthand his goodness. Can I get a witness? Is there anybody in here besides myself who has experienced for yourself the goodness of God? Amen. He's good. He's good. He's good. He's good in the a.m. He's good in the p.m. He's good early in the morning. He's good late at night. Our God is good. Amen. He's good. Oh, brothers and sisters, David declares, Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. He gives this urgent invitation to those who have not come to know about the goodness of our God. Don't leave this up to just the preacher. Invite others that you know who may not have come to know in the true sense about the goodness of God. Invite them to come to know about the goodness of our God. And I'll tell you the best place to start. Start at your house. Can I get a witness? Start at your residence. Start at your address. Make sure that everybody at your house comes to know about the goodness of God. You see, there are too many of us who are too content with our families going to hell. There are too many of us who are content and satisfied, pacified, or oh, with our loved ones, our neighbors and friends going to hell. But let them know you're missing out on so much. Simply because you have not come to truly know the God that I serve. Oh, brothers and sisters, 
David issues this urgent invitation to those who have not come to know the goodness of God. And all brothers and sisters, David declares here, you can know about the goodness of God. But David, my brothers and sisters, says you'll need to taste and see. He says, I can tell you about his goodness, but that doesn't substitute for you knowing for yourself. Oh, taste and see. You know the best way to find out how good food is? Taste it. It doesn't matter how good it looks. You'll know for certain once you taste it. Can I get a witness? David says, oh, taste and see. If you have any concerns about whether or not the Lord is good, you can find out the truth with just one taste. Taste and see. Can I get a witness? Amen. Oh, brothers and sisters, David issues this urgent request. And all oh, brothers and sisters, David moves on. There's something else that can be seen clearly in the text. And that is number two. We learn best of how good God is through personal examination and evaluation. We learn best how good God is through personal examination and evaluation. Amen. 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 Uh, oh, brothers and sisters, David tells them, if you want to really know how good God is, taste. Examine him. Taste. Evaluate him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. And I want to just tell you, if there's anybody sitting in here right now who does not know for sure that the Lord is good, that's a key indication that you haven't tasted. Amen. 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 Sometimes you can just look at folk that haven't tasted. Amen. 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 We learn best how good God is through personal examination and evaluation. I had to check him out for myself. Grandma told me that he was a good God. Mama told me that he was a good God. But all brothers and sisters, that was still not sufficient. I had to check him out. I had to examine him. I had to evaluate him for myself. Nothing takes the place of personal examination. Nothing takes the place. Nothing substitutes for personal evaluation. And I think I need to tell you, our God is a God that doesn't mind being examined. Can I get a witness? Our God is a God that does not mind being evaluated. He says, I dare you to check me out. God says, you can examine me, you can evaluate me, and you'll come away knowing. That David's words are true. That the Lord is good. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, I think I need to tell you that it didn't take several tastes for me to find out that God was the real deal. The first taste. I came to know beyond the shadow of any doubt that the Lord is good. 
Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters. David declares, examine him. Evaluate him. Taste and see. Oh, brothers and sisters, is there anybody in here who makes up this congregation this morning who can testify, who can witness truthfully that you've tasted? Is there anybody here who is a part of this congregation who can witness that you have examined him for yourself? When you taste, you'll know beyond any doubt that the Lord is good. Tell every doubter they just need to taste. Oh, brothers and sisters, tell every skeptic all they need to do is taste. Tell every unbeliever all they need to do is just taste. Oh, brothers and sisters, tell every atheist, every agnostic, that all they need do is just taste. Oh, brothers and sisters, David declares, oh, taste and see. Oh, taste and realize. Oh, taste and become cognizant that the Lord is good. Oh, brothers and sisters, but David moves a little further. He moves a little further and says something else that blessed me greatly. He says, blessed is the man that trusteth in him. He closed out the verse with those words. Blessed is the man. And in this case, man is generic. It could be man or woman. Blessed is the person. Blessed is the individual that trusteth in him. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, if you trust him, you will be blessed. If you wholeheartedly, completely trust him, you will be blessed. Can I get a witness? David closes this eighth verse with these powerful words. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Now I think I need to tell you there are so many people who have invested their trust, who have invested their confidence in other things. And live to later be greatly disappointed. Can I get a witness? There are those who invested their trust, my brothers and sisters, in their jobs. And later lived to be disappointed. There were some who invested their wholehearted trust and confidence in friends. And only lived to be disappointed. There were some who invested their confidence in their finances and in their financial strength and lived to later be greatly disappointed. Some even invested their confidence in government and lived to later be disappointed. But all brothers and sisters, those who invest their trust in the law will never be disappointed he always comes out a winner at the finishing line can I get a witness oh brothers and sisters I heard the hymn writer say I trust in God wherever I may be whether on the land or on the stormy sea Though billows roll, he keeps my soul. My heavenly father watches over me. 
Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, another songwriter said their trust in God was so great until they declared, you can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. You can't make me doubt him because I taste it and now I know too much about him. You can't make me doubt him in my heart. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, David here, my brothers and sisters, issues something that is worthy of being mentioned. On this occasion, David does a third thing. David, my brothers and sisters, makes this powerful declaration. He declares the wonderful state or condition of the person who places their faith and confidence in God. Can I get a witness? David declares the wonderful state or condition of the person who places their faith and confidence in God. Can I get a witness? Do you know, brothers and sisters, by placing my confidence, my faith and trust in God, I've been able to sleep at night even when the storms of life were raging. By placing my trust, my faith and confidence in God, I've been able to look at trials and tribulations and say weeping may endure for a night, but my trust is in God. And I know I will be all right because joy will come in the morning. Can I get a witness? Oh, brothers and sisters, I've got to leave you here. But I wonder, is there anybody in the temple who can testify you have been limited in some of the things that you had? But one thing you had and that you still have is trust in God. Can I get a witness? And oh, as I leave you here, I wonder is there anybody here who can say like the hymn writer, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand all of the ground is sinking sand now oh brothers and sisters if you trust in him he will take care of you. David says, blessed is the man who trusteth in him. That blessed is interpreted to mean happy is the man who trusts in him. You see, if you trust in him, he'll give you joy. Have mercy, Lord, that the world can't give you and that the world can't take away. Can I get a witness? If you trust in him, he'll walk with you, he'll talk with you, he'll hold your hand, he'll guide your footsteps. Can I get a witness? For the steps of a good man are ordered by the law. Can I get a witness here? Oh, as I leave you here, is there anybody here, yes, who can testify that the Lord is good? I don't know everything about trigonometry. I don't know everything, have mercy, Lord, about geometry. I don't know everything, have mercy, Lord, about other subjects. But I can tell you one thing I know for myself. I know that the Lord is good. Have mercy, Lord. Is there anybody here 
Anybody here, anybody here who can testify that the Lord is good, that the Lord is good. Now, if you know that you know he's good, now don't play with me, if you know, I say if you know you know that the Lord is good, somebody's still playing with me, if you know that the Lord is good, turn, turn, turn to somebody near you, shake somebody's hand, shake somebody's hand and hold their hand, hold their hand, hold their hand, hold their hand, hold their hand. Hold their hand. look them in the face, look them in the face and tell them these words, I can testify for myself. I know for myself that the law is good because I tried him for myself. I tried him for myself. I tried him for myself. He's good. He's good. He's sweeter as the days go by. Every day, every day, every day with Jesus is sweeter than the day before. Tell somebody, tell somebody, he's good, he's good, he's good. Tell them the reason I know, the reason I know he's good, because the man has been mighty mighty good to me he's good i tried him yes i tried him yes i tried him for myself he's good he's good he's keeping me alive keeps the blood running warm in my veins tell somebody he's good could have been dead and gone could have been gone a long time ago but I'm still here not because I'm so good but I'm still here because the Lord the Lord is good ain't God all right now now if you don't mind if you don't mind let me trouble you one last time turn oh turn oh turn to somebody else shake their hand shake their hand hold their hand and tell them excuse me but when i go to talking about how good he's been to me something happens to me when I start to talking about how good the Lord has been to me, something gets all over me. Something happens to me. I thank him. I thank him. I thank him. Thank him. Yes. Thank him. Yes. Thank him. Thank him. For being so good being so good thank you Jesus thank you Jesus thank you Jesus help me tell him thank you thank you I got wrong sometimes but you were still good to me I went the wrong direction sometime but you were still good to me you sent your son to die for me you're good, you're good, you're good. Now, if you know he's good, will you just help me shout yes? Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, Lord, yeah, 
pintura Tell somebody I'll be all right. Tell them I know I'll be all right. Because the God I said, the God I said, the God I said is good. Hey! Thank you, Jesus. He's good. He's good. Oh, he's good. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. The doors of the church are open. Somebody ought to walk out. Somebody ought to yield your life to that God who has been so good. You ought to come. Maybe there's someone here who has not yet accepted Christ. There might be somebody here who has not yet tasted to see how good the Lord really is. I urge you. I urge you to come. There might be someone else here who was once a part of a church but you strayed away and you can testify that things are not right now between you and God. He will take you back and he'll give you a brand new start. Won't you come? There might be somebody else here who was once a part of a church You're saved but you've been praying for God to guide you to a good church where you can continue to grow in grace and in the knowledge of Jesus Christ walk out don't let this year close on you without being as you should be with God. Walk out. You may be among those in the balcony. You may be one among these on the floor level. Walk out. And as the choir leads us, please don't let this opportunity pass you by. Praise Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory. Jesus. He's worthy. He's worthy to be praised. Help us say it, praise him. God bless you. Come right on. Praise him. Jesus. Bless him. He's worthy. From the rising. Until going down of the same, he's worthy. He's worthy. Jesus, he's worthy. He's worthy. Praise him. 
Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Praise Him. Jesus. Bless Him. He's worthy. God is our rock. A strong deliverer. A strong In him. Glory. 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 In all pain. Give him glory. He's worthy to be praised. Help us say it. God is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A strong deliverer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In him, glory, 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 in all pain, give him glory.
Oh, bless the Lord. I wonder, can I get you to lean over one more time and tell somebody, I know the Lord is good. And tell them, because I know he's good. He's not through blessing yet. There's some more blessings that are on the way. If we just hold out, if we just hold out a little while longer, Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. The call has gone out and we rejoice for the responses that have come.